ask about children, they ask about owning property. There's a ton of pressure that's put on these gatherings. Jeff Gunther is a licensed professional counselor and one of Gen Z's trusted sources for mental health and mindfulness tips with almost 3 million followers on his TikTok. How do you deal with differing opinions at the holiday dinner table? I want you to ask yourself what battles you want to partake in. He says setting boundaries early is key. Before you visit your family, you're going to say, hey, these are the topics that I can't wait to talk about, and here's some other topics that are totally off limits for me. All of these situations and more contributing to the mental health and stress of Americans around the holidays, with 25% of adults worrying about spending time with family and 26% concerned about political conversations over the holidays, according to the American Psychiatric Association. You're not going to change someone's mind overnight or over a dinner party. Author and licensed psychologist Psychologist Emily Bashaw says there are some strategies that can help you navigate chaotic family conversations. There are three different types of ideologies. There's the extremist, tribalist, and there's the person with agency. With the extremist, you're really not going to be able to talk them out of their beliefs because it's so ingrained. People who are tribalists may move towards extremism if they tend to see people as part of an outgroup. Conversations with people who are who practice self-agency and really are empowered to have difficult conversations with people. This is going to be the best group. This is going to be the group that we strive to belong to. And Dr. Bashaw says the concept of pre-forgiveness can help protect your peace. But this practicing of pre-forgiveness says, you know, I'm not perfect and I'm also allowing other people to not be perfect too. That they can also have their flaws. I'm just not going to take it personally. Do your very best to have a good attitude. It's okay if you center your needs, your emotional needs, and find people that are in your family that you feel safe and connected to and spend the most time with them, even if they are a dog. Maya Eaglin, NBC News. Even if they are a dog, sometimes <laughs> because they are a dog. All right, tomorrow morning, the 97th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will make its way down 6th Avenue in New York City. Quite the sight, and right now, officials are ramping up security and parade preps as millions of people are set to come out and watch the show. NBC News correspondent Emily Aketa is in New York City getting a first-hand look at the inflation of some of these balloons. Emily, hope you're having fun out there. So how many balloons and participants are in the parade this year? Any new or updated ones we should be looking out for? Hey there, yeah, so much to unpack here. And let me just say, I am so excited about this because I've never seen the parade in person. So this will be a really fun week. And so you'll see behind me, that is Snoopy, Beagle Scout Snoopy. It is, he is one of uh, seven new balloons to the parade and he's leading off the pack. We've got Smokey Bear behind me, nearly 50 balloons taking flight in this 97th uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Behind me, you can see the last minute preparations, they're still underway. They are inflating Wimpy Kid of the popular children's book series, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And let me tell you, this event is more than a year in the making. Take a look at some of these numbers here, these facts. More than 8,000 hours of labor, 5,000 volunteers involved, 4,500 costumes. And then when we're talking about the glitz and glam of the event, 2,000 gallons of paint, 300 pounds of glitter, and 200 pounds of confetti. Last wow. year, it was the most watched entertainment program in the holiday season. We know there will be millions of more eyes this year as well. And we know it starts earlier this year, 8.30. One of our own here at NBC News Daily, Tori Rooney, will be holding on to the Kung Fu Panda updated balloon. <laughs> so we're excited about that. Let's talk security, Em. What, what's happening in the city when it comes to security? Well, obviously, it is a chief concern to make sure that this goes off without any mishaps. We are operating according to authorities. The governor acknowledging that this is a heightened uh, security environment right now in light of the Israel-Hamas war. So they are ramping up and continuing to increase security presence. Just about anywhere you look around here, you're going to see police. You're going to see barricades up. And they say it is the highest level of coordination between local police, state police, and the FBI. Here's more from the Department of Homeland Security. So, yes, are we living in a heightened threat environment? Absolutely. Are we seeing an increase in calls for violence? Absolutely. Those calls are coming from outside of the country and inside of the country. Uh, but there are no credible threats to the parade or to New York at this time. 
And keep in mind, authorities say here in New York, there's been a more than 400% increase in anti-Muslim and anti-Semitic online rhetoric. And so that's also leading to some of the concern. But again, they are underscoring there are no credible threats to this parade. They're just encouraging people to exercise extra levels of vigilance. Yeah. But of course, in for a safe and fun holiday. Yeah, we want to keep it safe. We want to keep it fun. And of course, the parade is renowned for getting some big name performers every single year. So what artists are going to be singing and performing tomorrow? Oh my gosh, the biggest names you can imagine. We're talking Grammy winner John Batiste. We're talking Cher, a personal favorite of mine. I'm so excited to see the Rockettes. There are marching bands. It's going to be full of so much energy and fun tomorrow morning. So fun, and you have such a great perch. I've actually heard people saying watching the balloons being inflated is really a cool experience. So thank you for bringing that to us, awesome. Emily Aketa. And remember, you can watch the 97th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade right here on NBC or Peacock tomorrow morning starting at 8.30 Eastern. Set those alarm clocks. Set the alarm. And in the meantime, more NBC News Daily right after this. For tuning in. I'm Gotti Schwartz. Here are the stories we're following tonight. Storms keep coming here in California. The U.S. government just declassified this video. A lot more stories trending like crazy on social media. A controversy pitting lawmakers against young voters. What's the state of crypto today? Is it safe for investors? We've got another mind-bending story on artificial intelligence. This is what my voice sounds like when I clone it. That was it. You gotta see this. Stay tuned now. Weeknights at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on NBC News Now. News for the generation of now is NBC News Now. Thanks so much for watching NBC News Daily. We're back with some breaking news near Niagara Falls. Yeah, the FBI right now is investigating reports of a car that exploded at the Rainbow Bridge. That's a border crossing between the United States and Canada. The details are limited at this hour, but we do have a correspondent there. NBC News correspondent Kathy Park is on her way there. Uh, we're hoping that she will be able to join us shortly with the details on what she knows in terms of what happened during this explosion at the Rainbow Bridge. That's right. In the interim, we have been told that Governor Kathy Hochul of New York has been briefed on the situation that occurred at the Rainbow Bridge in Buffalo, New York. She said, quote, at my direction, the New York State Police is actively working with the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. Here to dig in more is NBC's Kathy Park. Kathy, I understand we have you now. Can you give us the latest on just what you know? 
Yeah, so we should point out, obviously, that this is still very much a fluid situation, but from our understanding of what's being reported so far, this happened just before noon today. Once again, as you mentioned, on the Rainbow Bridge, and this connects Niagara Falls, New York, to the Canadian side, and officials are saying that a vehicle was coming into the U.S. Once again, we have multiple agencies on the ground now or en route. Um, the governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, once again released a statement saying, in part, that that the New York State Police is actively working with the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force to monitor all points of entry to New York. She personally is traveling to Buffalo to meet with law enforcement and emergency responders and will be updating New Yorkers once uh, more information becomes available. But uh, once again, some video that uh, witnesses were able to capture on the ground, it looked like there was smoke and um, an explosion at the entry point as uh, typically when vehicles are coming into the U.S. and Canada. But once again, the FBI is saying that they're investigating a vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge, and they're coordinating um, at the local, state, and federal levels at this point, once again pointing out that this is a fluid situation. This happened just before noon today. We know um, there is a lot of law enforcement presence on the ground. Um, it's unclear who was in the vehicle, who was uh, behind the wheel at this time, um, if the area in the area uh, is, is being placed on a lockdown, still to be determined. But obviously, as you can see, things are still very fluid. Um, you just saw a local uh, station there just kind of getting on the ground, but it looks like there are folks uh, still kind of walking around in that area, but um, still, once again, a large law enforcement presence. Yeah, but. Yep. Do you know if anyone was hurt or if we know anybody was in the car? No, that, that information, still a lot of questions at this point. We don't know who was in that vehicle, um, who was it was possibly registered to, but mm -hmm. we know it, it just happened as uh, typically when cars are entering the, the U.S. side from yeah. Canada. Well, NBC News correspondent Kathy Park with the latest on that explosion near Niagara Falls. We'll bring you much more later. You're watching Daily. Champions? Oh no, she has so little here. I mean, she doesn't need a lot. If she goes down corner, nice juicer, Cheryl. <laughs> nice. Oh, 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 good stuff. Oh, dude, the Dwight's trying to do a head-on play. Is still broken shit? I mean they they changed the chat, they changed it, it's more fair now. It's just it's just it's, it, I just feel like it's held to a different standard. And it's so powerful that other Top killer boosts are kind of stupid in comparison. Juarez, Mexico, but reporting over the sky. Do you have any favorite exercise? Every exercise as in like it's your gym exercise. Playlist. Sure, the bench press. That one's always fun. I mean, I think it's everyone's favorite. I also like uh, calf exercise. What's the message that we're trying to get out to young people? Uh, what else? What else what I, like? I don't like squats or other stuff because I, I don't have your very good money. Mental health. Gen Picture. genetics with my flexibility. Like, I do Who's not bend my knees. Or my heels forward. 
This is good. This is good. This it's Thanksgiving, one little girl's family is thanking the University of Alabama's women's softball team for the support during the battle with rare form of cancer. Today, co-host Dylan Dyer Thanks for watching. Thanks. 
So, it, it, like, I know it's depressing, and I wish it wasn't the case. But you need to understand that, like, that's that's basically everything that's going on in the game right now. So you can't you can't act surprised. Uh, I fucked this up, didn't I? No, I'm fine. You can't act surprised anymore. Like that's what the game is all about right now. I'm fine. 